Hello YouTube, today in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to use ambient occlusion effectively in the game engine. If you don't know what ambient occlusion is in games, it's a way of simulating how light behaves in real life, which is radiating off objects, and I'm going to show you how to use that in the Blender game engine to make your model seem a lot more realistic. Okay, so to start off, you want your model, I just went ahead and made some weird looking thing. Now what you want to do is split your screen in half and make the bottom one a UV image editor and delete any lamps you have in your scene, that's very important otherwise the ambient occlusion will be stuffed up. Okay, I thought I was going to sneeze. Okay, now select your model and you want to unwrap it, so press tab, select everything with A, press U and click um, projection, no, um, just click Smart UV Project and give it an island margin of 0.3, click OK, and it will generate the UV image, it's going to crash on me now, ok there we go, so here's our UV image, now to that we're going to apply the ambient occlusion area, so you're going to go new and just name it AO. Now, when you're doing it, you want to make sure that your width and height are high. Uh, just so you know that ambient occlusion does take up a lot of your processor speed and if, unless you don't have a good computer, it's going to lag. Um, so, if you don't have a good computer, then just keep the width and height at about a thousand. If you have a good one and you're confident with your rendering speeds and you're fine with letting your computer sit there for like half an hour, then you can set it up to somewhere like 3000 to make your models look great. So I'm just going to leave it at 1000 because I don't want to bore you guys with me rendering. And now that that's going to be your ambient occlusion base image. So you want to change Blender game up here to render. Click on the world options which is a little world looking thing. And click on ambient occlusion. And go down to gather. And you want to go to samples. What samples is, is the amount of smoothness the ambient occlusion is going to have. If you're going to have 5 samples it's going to look very rough and ugly. You want to put the samples up to somewhere like 15. Or if you want it to look really nice, somewhere about 50, or if you really want to go overboard, then 100, but that's going to take forever to render, so I'm just going to leave it at 15. Now you want to go back to your render scene, go down at the very, oh, you want to turn NT aliasing down to 5, I think that's how you say it, and you want to go down to bake. Now for bake mode, choose ambient occlusion, and go ahead and click bake, and it will start to bake. Depending on what computer you have and how fast the processor is in your graphics card, it will depend on how fast it renders. My computer is relatively decent, so it's going pretty quickly. So here you see like shadows kind of coming off it and stuff like that. So now you want to go into textured mode, and as there's no lights, your model is going to be black. Make sure you're in GLSL material mode as well. Now go to your materials panel, give it a new material, and go to diffuse, wait no, go down to shading, and put the emit to 0.25. Now you want to go to your texture panel and add two new textures. Um, wait a sec. Here, here. The bottom one is going to be your ambient occlusion, make sure it's an image and just select your ambient occlusion from there and set it to UV. It's going to look like that. Um, I didn't set the margin properly here, so there is some texture seams, I'm not sure why, but when you put the diffuse texture, which is the color, you can't really see those seams, so it's alright, but that's what basically ambient occlusion is, it just shades how the model would look in real life. So you want to go back to your textures, go down to the very bottom where it says blend, and make sure the ambient occlusion is on multiplier. Then we go back to the top, and this one's going to be a color texture. So make it an image or movie, and just open up whichever texture you want on it. I'll just pick this one, so that's going to be my texture for that. And give me a sec. Um, if you unwrap it on a smart UV project, and it's like this, it's going to be kind of hard to just put a texture onto it. As you can see, there's little bad UV texturing there, so I'm not going to really bother about that because I don't have the time to mess around, but I'll just show you basically what I mean. Now that that's done, you want to go down to the bottom and click on normal, so that's going to give it a bit of a normal map, 
but you can't see that when there's no lights, so you want to add a lamp. And you want to turn the normal down a bit because it's way too much. Now this way of normal maps is very ineffective. It takes up a lot of processor speed and slows down your game. If you're going to use normal maps, make sure, you, make sure you use the actual proper ones. And that's it. That's how you make realistic looking models in Blender. So as you can see here, there's kind of like little shaded bits where there's a little hole in there and it'll be darker in real life so it's darker in there so and if you're gonna save your model you're gonna you're gonna have to make sure you save your image as well so you want to go to image save as image and save it wherever you want but that's basically ambient occlusion in real time as you can see it runs at a full 30 frames per second don't know why um maybe it's because of the normal map nah i don't know but something's wrong with that. Normally it runs at full 60 frames per second and the rasterizer is nowhere near 95%, it's more like 2%, so I'm not sure what's going on right now. But that's all there is to ambient occlusion. It's really effective, makes your models look a lot better. And that's all for this tutorial. Please subscribe, rate, and comment.